Now it's time for the sponsor perspective portion of this morning's program. The next conversation is presented by our sponsors, Telemundo and Comcast NBC Universal, who have supported the summit from, an, from its inception last year. Please join me in welcoming on stage Monica Gill, Executive Vice President and the highest ranking female executive at NBC Universal Telemundo Enterprises, Jackie Puente, Executive Director for External Affairs at Comcast. And leading this conversation is Lori Montenegro, who's a national and White House correspondent at Telemundo. Lori, the floor is yours. Buenos dias. Good morning. Thank you, Jackie. Thank Good you, morning. Monica, Hi. for, for Hi. being here. The wrong we just place have a rapid fire, they told me. Make it quick. So I'm going to start. Um, Monica, what would you say, uh, besides a, a good edu and solid education, what more do Latina women need to succeed in corporate America? Um, thank you, Lori, and thank you for having us here today. You know, I think as I was looking back at my career and thinking about coming over here, the first thing that really comes to mind is the need to get comfortable being uncomfortable. When you are in a new space, you're going to be in situations and positions where you are going to feel uncomfortable and it's going to make you sweat, it's going to make your hands sweat, it's going to make your stomach turn. But I think that the biggest thing I've learned in corporate America is being comfortable in situations that are outside of my sphere or circle. So I think I truly encourage people to get outside of their sphere. I think the other things that I've really been thinking about is the need to be, to be able to anticipate your boss's needs or the company's needs. Because at the end of the day, the market is changing, the world is changing regularly, so you have to always be ahead of what's next and be able to resolve those problems and have solutions for them before they even hit your desk. I think the need to be flexible. Um, you're going to be in situations where you have to manage during different circumstances or different people. So the one thing that I think we as Latinas have maybe done wrong in the past is that we want, we, we have conviction but we have to hold on to it loosely because things are going to change. And I think you have to be flexible. Change happens every single day. And in a company, it's going to be evolving very quickly. So you have to be able to do that. Having good judgment is critically important. If you think about people who've been promoted in the past, they're going to be promoted based on their judgment. And if you can't demonstrate good judgment, it's going to not work in your favor. So I think that's critically important. And the last is um, grit. Have some, if you haven't seen the movie True Grit, see the movie True Grit. Um, it is truly, I think, something about determination and constantly figuring out ways to be innovative and to get to your end goal. Um, and being determined with a little bit of attitude is totally OK. And Jackie, I piggyback on uh, what she's saying. You were mentioning to me back there in the green room that um, during your career, what you realized immediately was that you just couldn't sit at your desk and expect a promotion to come your way. Could you talk a little bit about that? Right, and I think it's it's a combination of the grit and judgment piece that you know all of our businesses, the city changes so quickly. You see transformations every single day, and so if you think you're going to go to work and do the same fantastic performance day in day in, day in and day out, and expect to see you know a promotion, expect to see yourself climb the the ladder of success, um, that's not going to happen. You need to push yourself to do more to show that you're already doing that work in so many ways and it comes, you know, it will come to you if you prove that you're thinking forward, if you're thinking about what your business needs. Um, the other thing I think that's so important is having a strong network, right, of people. Um, being nice to people on your way up, you're going to see them again. You know, in Washington, I think um, we feel like someone is here, someone is leaving town, they're, they're going on to another position, another office, um, but it's a, you know, it's a small world in the end and um, and making sure that you build those strong relationships and have that network that can support you no matter where you go. You could be in California, Miami, you, know, you could be in Moscow the next day, and you're going to be seeing the same faces. And, and their first impression of you means a lot, carries a lot. And I uh, can attest to that. 25-plus uh, career uh, years here in Washington, D.C., saying thank you and please goes a long way, even when you're not in the mood to be nice. <laughs> so... Right. Um, <laughs> Smile like you mean Make it. it. Exactly. <laughs> you both work for, for two different entities. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, OK, you're up here. But what exactly uh, are your companies doing uh, to help Latina women develop um, opportunities within your both of your corporations? 
Um, what innovative steps are you taking um, since you both are basically, and I want to remind you, we're looking at two women who are the highest ranking Latinas in their companies. And I think that's a great accomplishment um, and, and needs to be repeated. So what is, you know, Comcast, what is Telemundo and BC Universal doing uh, to help Latina women go on to the next step? So I think for us, one of the big accomplishments that I'm happy to say is that 50% of our women in leadership roles are women. I, I'm sorry, people in leadership roles are women. So I think that's a first step, is making sure that they have access to leadership roles. Um, from Remember, we do programming, so a lot of our programming side is critically important as well. It's not only what happens behind, but on the screen as well. And what we've done as an organization is we've taken a, we, we made a decision to redefine Hispanic media. And that means women have to be at the forefront of that. We've taken our characters where traditionally uh, women did not have lead roles and we put women in lead roles. We put Afro-Latinas in lead roles that has traditionally never happened. So we're constantly making sure that women have positions that they didn't necessarily have in the past or that they weren't um, given an opportunity to be a part of. Um, additionally, I think for us, we've established, uh, of course, women's networks that are critically important. But it really takes people who are in positions of power, whether it be Jackie, whether it be myself, whether it be people on my team, to make sure that when they're in positions, they're giving Latinas an opportunity to apply to the positions that are of those of leadership. My theory is that when you have a quarter office, it's your responsibility to just throw a rope out and bring another Latina back in. So I'm fully committed to that, and, um, and I don't apologize for that. Yeah. So, um, and I, you know, the content piece and the, the management piece that, that Monica talks about is critically important. When I joined Comcast six years ago, a lot of this was about um, helping our leadership build a plan to be successful, not just in Hispanic inclusion, but making sure that we were able to really motivate Hispanic America from a media and technology standpoint. So we just put a Latina on our board of directors. You know, this is the, the top, um, you know, Fortune 47 company, right? Having a Latina on our board of directors is fantastic. Um, to community investment, giving back into communities, evaluating programs, making sure that each dollar we put back, whether it's through our Internet Essentials program or whether it's through helping big brothers and sisters or, um, or working with local MANA chapters, you know, across the country, that we're making sure dollars get into the places where it's going to have the greatest turnaround. Um, and then developing businesses that, and business models that help Latinas. And one program I'm so proud of, and I have to mention it because I'm here, is our Internet Essentials program, where we've connected 4 million Americans, 1 million families, to high-speed broadband for $9.95 a month. And this program, what's incredible, and I know I sound like I'm on a commercial right now, <laughs> but what's really incredible is that 65 to 75 percent of the uptake are Latino households. And that means Latinas are making those decisions, and they're getting access to better health care, better education and resources for their children, opportunities to work. So it's really something that I see us giving back right where, right where it counts. So literally, we have basically four more minutes, and Diana's going to kill me because I'm going to do something here <laughs> real quick. But I want to say to both of you, ask both of you one thing. Um, I know what you're saying uh, sounds very good as to what you're saying, but a lot of people in the audience are probably saying, how do you make it happen? And that's the big challenge at these corporations. How do we make this happen quickly? You don't sleep. You add more hours to your day, and you show up and make sure that you, know, you don't lose a chance uh, to be there and to speak up and, and do yeah. the right thing. Um, you know, it's time away from your family. It's time away from important things. But when you things. speak up, are you afraid to speak up? Do we speak up? People who is, know is me in there... this room know that I'm not afraid to speak up. And so are there consequences sometimes at, at speaking up? I think there is. I think for, uh, for, for us, we have to make sure that you're clear that when you have a voice, people are going to judge you. You're going to be judged every single time you go up in front of your peers. And I remember having um, uh, an employee at one point that said, I don't like that you're judging me. And I said, I'm sorry, Miha, I hate to break it to you, but you're judged every single day. You're judged on a PPR. You're judged against your competitors when you're applying for a job. So you have to be OK. But it's really important that you have to understand how you're perceived. Know what people think about you. Because if you do know that, you're better able, equipped to answer those questions when you go up and you have to deliver against them. Um, and I think the other piece of it is understanding that you have to make a choice between a career and a job. If you want a career, let me be clear, there is no work-life balance. There's no such thing. There's going to be moments where there's going to be highs and lows, 
And at the end of the day, I think it's understanding that you have to make a choice. But if you have a network of people, if you have a family, I bring, I have 11 brothers and sisters. They come with me everywhere I go, whether it be on the phone call, whether it be at an event. So you have to find ways to bring them into your job and not always keep them out. Somebody in the audience wants to ask a question real quick. That wasn't planned. That's why Diana's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, anybody have a question? Go ahead, lady back there. Oh, I see her, and I know her, too. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Um, thank you so much. So um, what you just said, it kind of jumps at me, because what you're saying, you have to choose between a career and a job. A career, that obviously, is where you have your passion. But what do you say about choosing between a career and a family? I'm a working mom. I've been able to be successful in this town thanks to having amazing, understanding bosses and working in environments that give me that flexibility. Because we're Latinas, I do think our family values are different. You know, you feel a little guilty when you are not there to talk your kid at night. You feel, you know, really bad when you can't make it to your brother's or your mother's birthday parties. How do you balance and how do you recommend to the younger generations to do this? Go ahead. We have less than a minute here, but I started with Comcast when I was seven months pregnant with my son. I have one. And I just think every day that you wrap it into what you're doing, right? And you make it work. And, um, and I'm passionate about my job. I know. Passionate mm -hmm. about what I do every day. And I'm passionate about the fact that it helps build a better world for him. So unless I'm out there, you know, and I have a boy, if I had daughters, I'd probably be, you know, um, more intense than I am right now, if that's possible. <laughs> but unless we're out there doing this work, it's, you know, it's, um, it's hard to say what the future will be for children. So I see it as, as part and parcel of what I'm doing. And I think for me, the answer is that you be with your family when it matters, when it counts. There will be days you're going to have to miss um, graduations or certain important events, but be there at the events that matter for them most. And I think you're going to be able to deal with, um, with our guilt a little bit more. Um, and also bring them in. I, my family comes with me to events. They go to me with me to places where I need them to be because it's important for me that I spend time. So you have to find alternative ways to spend times with them that are included inside of your workforce. Finally, with all of that said, very briefly and in 10 seconds, what is it that we all bring to the table? Authenticity. Yeah, credibility, authenticity, but also, you know, this is the future market. If you don't have Latinas at the table, you're gonna not be able to sell whatever it is you're selling, whatever product, whatever service you have. These are the decision makers and the common sense that's needed to go forward. Thank you, ladies. Thank right. you.